Just basically when you're taking reference from a photo or laying out completely new original illustration or drawing, you want to decide what's going to be the dominant part of your painting. You whether want to focus on mass, which is just your values, or do you want to focus on form, which is light versus shadow, shadow here, you got light right there, shadow here, you got light right here, or if you want to just do completely just worry about lines, then you don't color it, you just use charcoal and you just draw everything out with physical lines, black outlines. And you go from that direction right there. But essentially the easiest thing to work with shapes and like taking a reference photo is that you wanna break down the complicated shapes into simple shapes. This broken piece of wall is just a rectangle. Long box, simple, Three faces, one up, one to the left, one here to the front. You can already see where the light interacts with the object. You got the light on top. You got a little bit of light here on the side, but you know, it's still facing away, so it's still in shadow. And then here's just completely all in shadow. No light hits it. Only a little bit of it from here bounces back into it. And you just continue that with, you know, the rest of the composition or the rest of the reference photos. Um, got this pathway, rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Uh, you have the hills, just basically half spheres layered on top of each other. You got this flat plane here. You can build out the shape there. You got another rectangle stacked below this rectangle. You got a little rectangle stacked on the side. It's broken off. Then you build this out right here. Same right there. Laying all out easy for you to break down and place everything and see how it all fits together portions wise. And then you have the background with the water, straight line across, you got another half sphere, got a little triangle slope, another square cube, rectangle, whatever you want to call it, with a little edge right there on the side, jet it off, another wall, long vertical rectangle, and that's how you do it, in that way, you just make sure that this is spaced evenly here, this is spaced out here, how much negative space you have, how much regular space you're using. Very rough draft, laying out the main idea before you get into the details. Same thing can work with more organic options. Same thing can work with more organic. Same thing can work with more organic subjects such as people. Um, you can use an oval for a head, a tube for her neck, um, a bigger tube for her body, 
long tubes for her arms. You have the cat here blocking her, but you get the gist of what you're wanting to paint. And you lay out the details. You see her hair is like a bowl cut, basically. You got the little front on the top. You got two side parts right here. And you got the drapery right there. But working with the idea of no tan design or laying down your composition with values, you can see in the right that if you picked up all the dark values, whether it be the actual true color or shadow, um, you can see it fills up all of the space over here. And all the light that's picked up is in these plot points right here. And you get a result of like a very like you know abstract layout of what your composition look, will look like. But you know if this is pleasing to your eye, and if this is delivering if this is delivering the message you want to give across to whoever is looking at this painting, then you continue with that and you break it down further into the finer details. You got the main idea already across across the board. So. Let me show you where they highlighted the light areas. White right here. So you got the light reflected here off the top of her cheekbone and around the ridge of her nose. You got a little highlight on top of her chin. Um, in, the, in the midst of all the shadow, you got another highlight right on the jawline then you have a highlight underneath on the left side of her nose and then another one on left side of her cheek or her right side um, which is reflect the light um, if it were me um, there's a little reflection probably it's like probably her scalp right there I'm trying to figure out where that is at in reference Maybe it's that, I'm not sure. But the reason you don't see the highlights here in this composition is because the value of her hair is very dark, it's black hair. So you wouldn't group, you would group that with the rest of the shadows. If she was blonde, then the composition would look like this. And it would just give out a different shape. Yeah, it will give out a different shape. And that's just exaggerating, but you get the idea. So, we got very sharp, a very strong highlight on the top of her shoulder. Got in between the hair. We got on her, around the clavicle, collarbone area. You got ref nice reflection on your scarf and you have the white area of the cat's fur and then I'm trying to figure out what this is at I'm guessing it's like a triangle I guess it might oh the highlight on her other shoulder so there you go that's how you break it down with more organic um, subject matters, something with like less solid geometric shapes and you can still find a way to break down the shapes and lay out what you want to build for your composition. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys this little fun piece I did while I was learning from my tutorial about Peter Pan and what they did designing their concept shots or um, storyboard layouts. And you can see on the top from the notes that the professor made, many discount the sophistication of the use of shapes in Peter Pan, probably because it is a cartoon or animation or not high art, just similar to how other cartoons or anime or other popular media, media is just thrown to the side and you know discounted for. But a lot of effort takes to design those projects and execute them well enough that they last the, the testament of time, basically. So you want to learn from the greats in order to do that. 
make sure your art stays around for 100 years and be successful. But let's explore just how the Disney artist's theme and use shapes to mute, move the viewer's eye around and direct them to areas of interest. Don't let simple application fool you. Pay attention to the rock shapes around and below Peter Pan. They're all different shapes. This is a variation on the theme. The arcs and straight to curved lines differ in each rock. So I want to show you just some fun little things you can notice about how they design this. So generally speaking, what I'm getting from this is a sense of a very dramatic scene, maybe Peter Pan is very, very, being very secretive, or he's like in a place of wonder, he doesn't know what's going on, everything's so much bigger than him, he feels small. Um, you can see there's a little figure here, I don't, I'm not sure why it's posing or why it's like bowing down to him or something like that. I don't remember the movie all much, but maybe it's a scene where like they're doing tribute to him. Um, maybe they're praising him in and, and the area where it's like very magical and just like, you know, like I said, mysterious or something's lurking in the water. He's looking in the water directly below. So, first thing you want to notice is he's got a little round head. And compared to that is a very sharp, jagged rock. It goes to the right very dominant shape versus the tiny little head. Matter of fact, the whole composition is just set up with very dominant shapes. Circled around this head. <laughs> Circled around specifically this area. So there's already a sense of balance. Um, there's a sense of like weight to the composition already just from this piece alone and You can notice That they're using shadows and shapes uh, To direct your eye to Peter. You have a little shadow here and then You have the line pattern of like dark light dark light and then dark again, going straight down into the lake. And then you have this sharp angle going in this general direction. This is also like, you know, lead dry up there. There's a lot of weight into that decision making of like where he's placing the shadows. Next, you want to notice the reflections giving a sense of rhythm amongst the cave. It's, you notice that the cave is majority dark values. Its major key is dark values um, compared to the amount of light values, uh, which is the positive space right here. We got it right here on the rocks versus the negative space of the open sky in the background. You have the reflections here and all the objects giving a strong contrast, strong, strong contrasting shapes on the objects. And it gives a nice composition, a matrix key pattern versus everything else. I can just do this. Oh, I'm gonna fill this in. Blow it. And then go do that. So you already have like a nice sense of pattern here. You can like just dissect it like that. It's kind of rudimentary how I did it, but kind of grungy look to it. Dingy. Let's get that. Um, do that again. You can notice the, the light values on the objects 
create a very good contrasting um, effect versus light and dark values and it gives nice shapes in the composition to look at and it's very pleasing to the eye there's a nice sense of rhythm it just flows pretty well and they have a sense of direction so you see the waving lines up down up down up down straight so what you want to aim for when you're designing things you want it to look nice clean and just you know presentable um, whether it be a pleasant looking composition or a very chaotic one it has to have an order to it in some sense of fashion in order for your eye to go somewhere to focus on, on a piece and then the final thing pertaining to shapes is you want to notice the big shapes you know like I said earlier have axes axes on them it gives a weight to it depending on the direction where they're at and that does not look right <laughs> I just drew the tip of a dick <laughs> all right let me go that again the final thing you want to notice with these shapes is the axis line and they have different weights to them and what you want to notice is this shape particularly in here has the strongest one it has a positive effect or a concave effect it's going out it's not going in versus uh, the different other objects uh, let me see there's a convex one um, I have to notice everything seems to be more popping out but anyway you see the shape pushing the weight of the composition over here in this area and it also helps the fact that you got or this dark value here versus the light value here it's very dominant pushing your eye to go look over here and again that's something that the artist designed and thought carefully about when laying out this composition whenever you're looking at reference photos or laying out your composition you want to make sure you break down your shapes into very feasible and sizable things that you can manage and work with piece them together lay them over around the composition like jigsaw puzzles figure out what you want to do with your composition and what the message or key focus you want to point to again these three videos I've been making like the, the main idea is pushing area focus the, the purpose of the composition and the steps to lead people's eyes to get to that end goal you want to have a purpose of your piece I'm repeating it over and over drilling into your head and with shapes it's just another tool to help you do that Shapes have weight, shapes have an axis line, a, they convey different senses of feeling. Um, you can research basically quickly um, graphic design, shape, meaning, and you can like learn quickly from that. Um, you can apply different shapes in your composition and see if it helps reach towards the effect that you want to give. And then you want to use shapes in a symbiotic relationship with line, mass, values in order to create contrast, in order to create balance and in order to, you know, create a good looking piece. The main thing is that you want to lead your eye around the surface of the composition. Paper is flat. There is no way to make a 3D space out of a flat 2D surface. So you want to create the effect of space with these shapes and these different tools um, like lines like I showed you in the last video. Like lines can give a very powerful sense of force and movement. So that's about it for this tutorial. Um, it was a really quick overview. Really not too much to go over, like a lot of the stuff is just repeat stuff from the first two episodes, but it's just going into just a different aspect of art and what you can do with it. So next video, I gotta see if it's gonna be something over how to start with digital art, 
or something entirely different. Um, I just got to see what my schedule's looking like, but I've been having fun with these tutorials and I appreciate anyone who takes the time to listen and watch and listen to me ramble a little bit about art because I'm trying to learn with you guys. I'm trying to learn and improve myself every single day, wake up every morning excited about art and you should too. Um, you, if you, if this is a hobby, um, it doesn't hurt to get a little bit better and make better and more complicated or meaningful things out of it. If this is going to be your career, um, it's important for you to learn and keep growing in order, you know, to stay ahead of the curve and, you know, don't get left behind in your field, you know, be the different guy. You want to get the attention of like whoever's looking on your Instagram feed. So thanks for checking out my video guys. Um, don't forget to follow, click subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel. Um, hit a reminder for every time I upload a new video and then you'll be able to get a link and go watch it. Um, Ramoft.com has my email subscribe list. Uh, I'm going to start sending out newsletters probably like once every three uh, months, um, maybe once a quarter, maybe twice a year just to give you guys some cool updates and some freebies and some chances to win uh, some free posters or commissions that I'm going to do um, in the future. And then don't forget to follow RamoFT on Instagram. As always, love you guys. Always smile. Peace out.